Hey guys, it's Dante Ferrigno coming back to you again from Ferrigno Freedom Channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad to see the channel is still growing and there's more and more people coming every day. It is so encouraging to me to see the growth of this channel on YouTube and what I've been able to do talking about what I've experienced on Lion Diet. And I am really trying to take my game to another level. Lately, I have been doing a lot of research and doing a lot of reading and writing and looking into a lot of things in my spare time. I've still got a lot going on with the move and it's really slowed me down and doing a lot of things that I wanna do on the channel here. I wanna get back to showing you guys the exercise I've been doing because I've finally got that started again, but it's not to the level where, I'm, where I was before, but I'm gonna be bringing that to you very soon. So please hang in there for those of you who love the walk and talks and love the exercise videos. I understand from my last poll that that's a very popular thing that I do here on the channel. It's coming back, I promise you. Knowing that I got derailed from the foods that I was eating over the past six months that I didn't realize had vegetable oils in them has made such a big difference. And also getting those things back out of my system are making such a big difference. I can feel the difference. I can feel it in my mind. I can feel it in my body. My weight is starting to get back under control again. I mean, I was down to 176 six months ago before I started having access to that type of food. And now I've been hanging around 189, which I have no complaints. That's my high school wrestling weight. I didn't think I would ever get back down to 189, let alone be able to be below that. I didn't even I really didn't think it was even humanly possible for me to be that small, but I'm still a big guy. I just don't have all the extra weight. And it is, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. That's the only way I can describe it. And I want everyone to be able to have this. You know, I was talking to some people at my work today, just telling them about what I, what I do. And I, I'm reminded all the time, so many people don't know anything about the benefits of carnivore living or just getting away from sugar and processed foods and seed oils. We're all living in a fog. We're living in a lot of lies going on right now. And I noticed one of the comments on a recent video that made me want to talk about a video I saw a long time ago. Since I've been doing reactions to these videos with you, I'll let you know ahead of time. I've seen this one before, but I watched it on my own and I was just shocked at what I was seeing. And I thought, this is the kind of thing I've got to let you guys know about because Part of it is a lot of this stuff isn't just by accident. It isn't just bad research. It's on purpose. And when you hear this video, it's going to help you understand a little bit about what we're up against. And if you've been on this carnivore journey with me for any long period of time or even a short period of time, and you've noticed some of the benefits, this is important stuff for us to know because we've got to be able to encourage each other to press on to get healthy so that we can fight against this nonsense when the time comes. We have to be able to provide for our families, take care of ourselves, take care of our communities so that we're not letting the people who would want to keep us in the dark and for whatever reason stop us from being healthy and happy. We got to be able to say no to that. As long as there's breath in my body, I'm going to be fighting for the freedom of each person to be able to make a decision on what they want to do in their life, where they want to go with their life, and hopefully have the health to do it, and the mental health too, not just the physical health. And the foods we're eating are causing us a lot of trouble. But even more than that is the people that are behind wanting us to be in this state. Well, I think I've hinted at it enough, so let me go ahead and bring up this comment that first brought me into this. No wonder, this is from Faded Glory 1045, and it wasn't 21 hours ago. I took the snapshot of this back on, on August 1st. Faded Glory 1045 says, Now, wonder what happens if this tick that has been modified by Gates to make a person allergic to meat to all of us that can't eat veggies. Conspiracy? I don't know. They want the planet to be vegan. Now, I don't know anything about Gates modifying the tick, but I've heard of this tick. That supposedly if you get bitten by this tick, it could cause you to become allergic to meat. So is he modifying it? I don't know. But the video we're about to watch is going to shed a little bit of light on what kind of plans people have. Now, this isn't just some conspiracy guy out there in the ether. Somebody saying all kind of crazy things. 
This is a TED Talk video. This is an archive from TED conferences. So let's see what this gentleman has to say. Uh, let's see. This is by Matthew Liao, recorded at uh, TED at New York City in 2013. So 10 years ago, this is what they were already talking about. And as a matter of fact, before I get too far into that, let's just take a look at who this S. Matthew Liao is. S. Matthew Liao is an American philosopher specializing in bioethics and normative ethics. He is internationally known for his works on topics including children's rights and human rights, novel reproductive technologies, neuroethics, and the ethics of artificial intelligence. He's the same age as I am. This is for real. And the reason I got to tell you this is for real is when you guys hear this, especially when you hear the audience's reaction, you're going to you're going to wonder, is he joking? He's not joking. Let's take a look at it. Climate change is one of the biggest problems that we face today. Millions could suffer hunger, diseases, coastal flooding as a result of climate change. We may be beyond the point of no return. Scientists believe that we have no choice but to consider geoengineering. This is large-scale manipulation of the Earth, such as spraying sulfate aerosols into the ozone layer in order to increase the reflectivity of the planet. But geoengineering is very, very risky. We have never attempted the... Do you realize that this is no longer just somebody talking on a TED Talk, you know, where the information ideas are being shared? This is being proposed by modern government officials. This is, this is in the mainstream right now. The idea that if we block out the sun, we might be able to save the planet. What he just talked about 10 years ago is now coming into reality today. So take this seriously. Please take this seriously. He's being alarmist about climate change, but I'm trying to let you know that this goes far deeper than just getting healthy. We're fighting against thinking like this. Technologies on such a large scale. So we could end up destroying the entire ozone layer. I want to consider a class of solutions that have never been considered before. Human engineering. It involves the biomedical modification of human beings. I'll give four examples. Here's one. 18% of greenhouse gas emissions come from livestock farming. So if we eat less meat, we could significantly reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Now, some that people sound familiar? would be willing to eat less meat, but they lack the willpower. Human I'm engineering not. could help. <laughs> Just as some people are naturally intolerant to milk or crayfish, like myself, we could artificially induce mild intolerance to meat by stimulating our immune system against common bo uh, bovine proteins. And in this way, we can create an aversion to eating echo and friendly food. And, and he, he's talking about exactly the thing that our commenter earlier was mentioning about the way that that chemical or that toxin that the tick releases into people that causes them to not be able to eat meat anymore, to basically make them allergic to meat. He wants to take that to a stage of making sure that that's in you, even if you don't get bit by the tick. He's serious about this. And the audience, some of them sound like they think he's joking, but some of them sound like they're, they're like all behind that. That sounds like a great idea. I'm all for that. We're watching insanity play out in front of us right now. And I'm trying to see if I can't be a voice against it. So let's keep going. can do this example, by having meat patches, kind of like nicotine patches. <laughs> People can then wear these patches before they go out for dinner to curb their enthusiasm for eating meat. Here's a second example. Our ecological footprints are correlated with how big we are. 
a car uses more fuel to carry a larger person than a smaller person. Larger people also wear out shoes, carpets more quickly than smaller people. So, another possibility is to have smaller human beings. That's right. Being small is environmentally friendly. Thank you. You know, there's a country where the people are extremely small for some reason, and that's North Korea. And South Korea doesn't have this same problem with the height challenge. It's North Koreans who are being fed a certain diet and don't get to eat certain things that are exactly what he's talking about right now. And that's it's so evil in my opinion. I can't even hardly fathom listening to this and taking it seriously except that we're seeing it happening right now in real life. It's a 15 centimeter of reduction in height would mean a mass reduction of 23% for men and 25% for women. So how can we do this? We could use pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. This is something used in fertility clinics to screen for embryos with genetic diseases. We could use it to screen for children who will be smaller. Third example. <laughs> And also reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by lowering birth rates. There's a direct link between cognition and lowering birth rates. In the U.S., people tend to have more children before age 18 if they have lower cognitive ability. So we could use cognitive enhancements like modafinil or ritalin to lower birth rates. Final example. Many environmental problems are the result of collective action problems, where people are unwilling to cooperate for the greater good. But studies have shown that people given the hormone oxytocin were much more willing to share money with strangers, <laughs> and to behave in more trustworthy ways. Oxytocin also improves our ability to read other people's emotions, which is a key capacity for empathy. So we could use, we could give people oxytocin in order to increase their willingness to cooperate with other people. So why should we take human engineering seriously? Because geoengineering is very risky. If if it goes wrong, geoengineering could end up destroying the entire planet. In contrast, he's right about that. But there's no doubt that engineering humans. Isn't any less risky? I mean, the risk is obvious; should be obvious when you start playing with us at the human genome and messing with the genetic setup for purposes that ultimately this climate change stuff is about power and control and a bunch of people who don't want the rest of the people around. You know, when you start listening to. To the the Avengers movies and hearing the people that are arguing for Thanos's argument, you've got people that buy into this stuff. They think it's just something that's fun to talk about, but ultimately, in their soul, they start thinking, "Yeah, it would be better if there were fewer people. It would be better if we had smaller people, or if we had, you know, people that weren't able to eat meat because it would save the planet gases and all this other stuff that he's talking about." This this is in people's minds, and the people like at the World Economic Forum, Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab, the people who all wanted us to eat bugs、uh, and to not have meat at all, to get to where that we don't eat meat at all, they're saying exactly what he's saying, and they're moving us in that direction with their 2030 plan. So it's no joke. Even though people are laughing 10 years ago, I, I th- I'm willing to bet you a lot of the people laughing in this video. If they were listening to it now, they wouldn't be laughing, because they'd see exactly what's happening, like he's talking about. The human engineering technologies that I've been talking about, PGD, oxytocin, are already safely available for other uses. And that's scary. Also, human engineering is applied at the individual level, so the risks are much more manageable. Than something like geoengineering, which takes place on a much, much larger scale. Finally, human engineering could also be more liberty-enhancing. In response to climate change, 
Some, po- some people think that we should adopt China's one-child policy. This is very drastic. But given certain fixed allocation of greenhouse gas emissions, human engineering could give families a choice between having one large child, two medium-sized children, <laughs> or three smaller children. This is much more liberty-enhancing than a policy that says that you can only have one child. We are the cause of climate change. Maybe we are also the solution to it. Thank you. Thank you. Blows my mind. It just blows my mind. He's absolutely serious about everything that he just said. And a lot of people, you know, they realized back then that this is this sounds ridiculous, but it's what we're seeing going on right now. And it's why I am working so hard to help people get healthy while they can. I have seen what getting rid of all the processed foods, the sugars, the refined foods, the the table salt, the stuff that's bad for you, getting natural salt, drinking water, drinking club soda, things that don't have all these additives and sweeteners and all this other junk in it. I only eat ruminant meat and it has been working amazing things in my life. The past two and a half years, I've gone from what you saw in the opening credits to what you see now. I'm 186 pounds the last time I checked uh, on the scale because I've been eating right again and I'm getting back to where I would like to be. It's truly amazing what has been able to happen to me and it can happen to you too. Just like it happened to Miles and David in my talk last week with the two cattle ranchers. They've changed their lives eating a carnivore diet. Their solution was right under their nose and they didn't even know it. But now those two data-driven guys who were very serious about trying to take care of the, their family's health have started taking care of their health by switching to a carnivore way of living. It doesn't have to necessarily be lion diet like I'm doing. My situation is unique. If your situation is like mine, it might be the best choice for you. But I still believe that a carnivore way of living is going to help you to get to the health that you want to be at, to be able to get the brain fog gone, to help you sleep at night, help you wake up in the morning, help you have energy, help you be able to exercise like you always want to do, but just never have to seem the time or the energy to do to be able to live the life you want to live, to be able to think through the processes that you want to think through so that you can accomplish the dreams that you have for yourself. All of this has been enhanced tremendously in my life by a carnivore way of living, and it can definitely happen to you too. I don't want to see people with the thinking like this that come with good intentions and ideas that say, Oh, this is going to enhance my freedom because we don't have to use the totalitarian idea of the one child policy. You can just select the children that you want to have and the size you want to have them. Like the movie Gattaca. You know, when you start looking at these dystopian movies about genetic futures, you realize that's exactly what he's talking about. And that's what he wants to lead us toward. And this is ethical. This this makes sense to people in his position. They're trying to take away your life, your health, and get all of this out of the way so that they can have the world that they want to have. It has nothing to do with helping the poor or helping the masses. It's all about helping themselves. And I, for one, am not going to stand for it. As long as I have breath in my body, I'm going to keep talking about how I can help you guys get healthy. And as long as you guys keep supporting me by watching the channel and thank God for my patrons and those of you who buy from the affiliates that I use like Redmond Salt and Carnivore Crisps, those companies help me to be able to focus more and more attention on the work I'm doing here and less and less to be working for somebody else so that I can keep helping people get healthy. As a matter of fact, I've gotten to the point where I can barely keep up with my comments anymore. I have spent hours and hours over the past few weeks answering comments and reading through comments, and I can still scroll for just for minutes and not get to the end of all the comments that I'm trying to to address. So I also want to let you guys know something I have in the works, and I need your continued support for this too, and that's that I am working on a coaching program where you can speak directly to me. Those of you who are having trouble figuring out how to get started on this, how to work it together with your family, how to do it yourself, how to really just get going. It seems like it's easy but I, to me, 
But at the same time, I've talked to so many people who just don't know what it is exactly they need to do. So I want to be able to make myself available to people directly. So keep your eyes open. I'm working on that now. It's, 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 all new ground for me, so give me time to put it together. Meanwhile, if you want to help support me through my Patreon, go to my Patreon in the link in the description and join up. Even a dollar a month really helps. I don't care how much you're, you're donating. It's if, if you're contributing to help me get this message out, I'm amplifying your voice so that we can get more people healthy, more people happy, more people doing and providing for their family, doing the right things for their community, and being able to be a positive force in this world and to see people happy and healthy again is just the, something I would love to see. And if you'd love to see that, I appreciate you watching and I appreciate your support. I'll see you guys next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?